Have you ever wondered how you can add multiple strokes to an object in Illustrator? You might have tried to do it down here and tried to add more than one stroke because you've seen other people create artwork with more than one stroke. But that's not where you do it. You do it in the appearance panel. And when you work with live effects, they also show up in the appearance panel. So if I select this text, there's already a fill-in stroke applied to it. But what I can do is open up the appearance panel and come in here to the wing menu and say, add new stroke. And if I add the new stroke, it overrides the old stroke. So if I put that up to maybe a value of, say, three or four, and we'll just change the colour as well, choose one of our colour swatches, so we'll get a nice bright red colour. You may think, well, there's not much difference to what we had before, but let me show you some of the power of the appearance palette. If I also choose a fill, so I'm going to choose a different colour first of all, so you can see that clearly. You'll notice I'm filling the colour there with a gradient. I'm going to override that just to show you and choose the yellow colour again. Now, it looks as if it has the same appearance as it did before, specifically because I had yellow fill and red stroke. But the great thing about the appearance palette is I can change the order in which things appear. So I could drag the fill above the stroke. And you'll notice now the stroke is behind the fill. It means I can give it a really thick outline without having to worry about whether the text is readable or not. I also have controls in here for things like opacity. So if I wanted to bring the opacity down or give it a blending mode, maybe screen it with the background or choose hard light mode or something, I can composite it on the background using the appearance panel. And it remains live. That's the important thing about this panel. Everything that I change in here remains live and editable. Now I can even add multiple strokes. So if I go in here and say add new stroke, let's add a red stroke on top of our other stroke. In fact, let's put it behind the other stroke and let's make it black. So I'll choose a black colour and increase the size of it and you'll start to see it starts to grow out from behind the other stroke. So I can start to create these really lovely graphic effects that look great for things like comics. So perfect for my Illustrator superhero text. And of course the text remains editable, so if I decide that I maybe need to add a little bit more tracking, for example, I could just go in here and adjust the tracking and everything updates. Now, you'll notice it's a little bit slow to respond, and that's just basically because I have very complex artwork. If I alt-click on the eyeball and just hide everything, it'll make it a lot faster for me to work in there. So one other thing to look at is the pen item here. If I switch on my superhero, you'll see I've created this pen. And if I open up the pen settings, so select that group, you'll notice that when I select the pen, in the appearance panel, I can't see any of the effects that were used to create the pen. Quite often, you need to actually select the group itself to be able to access the items in the appearance panel. So here I've applied an effect, 3D Revolve, to create this 3D pen. And you can get into your effects here, and we'll cover live effects in another tutorial and 3D effects. But basically, once they're in here, you can click on the hyperlink and get access to the controls so that you can make changes to things like the angle or the shading. So again, it's all live, so I can go back in there and edit it. But if I want to make it look as if this pen is being held in her hand, I can't really do it while I have the 3D Revolve Live effect on here. So generally what I tend to do is I'll duplicate the pen with the live effect attached so that if I need to go back to it and make changes, I can. And then I make that invisible and lock it. And then this one, I'm going to expand appearance. Now we'll talk about expanding appearances in more detail in another movie. But for now, basically all you need to understand is that I've converted it from a live effect to vectors. And the great thing about that is now I can go in here with my eraser tool and just erase the section that would be going behind her hand and that will make it look as if it's in our hand. That's a little bit too big. So let's make that brush a little bit smaller. Okay, I'll just take another bit out there. 
And now if I just deselect, you'll see it looks more like the pen is in our hand. Obviously, I need to remove a little bit more. Let me just continue erasing down to here. And there we have her holding her pen. So it's very useful to be able to expand effects and appearances in the appearance panel. However, once I've done that, I can then select the pen again and add some more effects to it. So I could go down here and get access to maybe my artistic effects a la Photoshop. If I'm not sure what they look like, I can go into my effect gallery and just select a couple of effects and decide on which one I want to add to my pen to give it a more graphic appearance. And then the effect reappears here in the panel. So you can expand artwork and then apply new effects to the artwork. So that's one option. Create a copy of your pen so you can get back to the 3D if you need to. And then with the expanded pen, add your effects separately in the appearance panel. Now there's various other options for adding new stroke and adding new fill at the bottom here, which is just the same as going into the menu item. And there are also additional options in here, which we'll have a look at later when we talk more about expanding appearance. So that's a little run through of the appearance panel. If you open Superhero Appearance End, you can see the result of the trim that I've done on the pen and the stroke work that I did on the text.